Genesis chapters 1 to 11 can be used as a case study for biblical authority. They can be and will be this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Calvin Smith. And I'm Richard Fangrad. Is the world going crazy? As, as a Christian, it's likely that you've asked yourself that question. Political leaders, professors, celebrities, educators, people everywhere make statements and advocate positions that are shocking. Mm -hmm. uh, we ask, how can they think that way? And it, it seems that common sense isn't so common anymore. Absolutely. Now, sadly, in many churches, the situation isn't much different. Church rulings on contemporary issues and opinion pieces in Christian magazines often seem disconnected from the truths of Scripture. Yeah. Uh, it, it's almost as though they, they've pulled up the anchor on uh, you know, that anything that connects them to biblical truth, and as a result, are now tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Yeah. Our topic this week is biblical authority, specifically how it relates to understanding the creation account in the Bible given the origins debate and the influence that the scientific data has on how people understand that portion of Scripture. Right. So, so what is biblical authority? That's what we're yeah. looking at. Um, we've already uh, hinted at it. Here, here's a definition. Biblical authority refers to the extent of which biblical doctrines are authoritative over human belief and conduct. For example, uh, someone who holds to a, to a high level of biblical authority places their beliefs opinions, and ultimately their behavior in a secondary position to what the Bible says on any given issue. Right. Someone who holds to a low level of biblical authority might mingle scripture together with other uh, concepts that they believe or hold equal to or even greater authority than those of, of the Bible. Right. Uh, Genesis chapters 1 to 11 prov provides a kind of a unique testing ground, mm -hmm. sort of a case study for testing how consistent an individual Christian's thinking is. For example, regarding the death and resurrection of Christ, Christians will go to scripture and they'll glean the details of the events leading up to the crucifixion and then the resurrection, uh, the timing, who was there, the sequence of events, all those details, Christians will generally get those by carefully examining scripture. Mm -hmm. However, regarding the creation account, there's a much greater tendency to give authority to extra biblical ideas rather than going strictly with the text. Absolutely. That's why Genesis 1 to 11 provides a case study, so to speak, right. for biblical authority. So, so we're going to deal with some basic foundational aspects about biblical th authority first. Then we'll relate these things to Genesis uh, in, in a few minutes. The first thing we need to point out is that um, we, we kind of live in a postmodern, uh, you know, world of postmodernism that has had a, it's got a profound effect on the way people think and those people in the church as well. Yeah. One of the main characteristics of postmodernism is epistemological humility. That, that it's dangerous to be too sure of anything. Mm -hmm. All human knowledge is uncertain. All human opinions are subjective. And truth can't be known for certain. Uh, as a result, human opinion is raised to the highest level because that's all you've got. Yeah. Um, and that philosophy results in, uh, in two key features that go hand in hand. Uh, which is tolerism, or tolerance and, and pluralism. Right. right? Yeah. Um, it's the idea that even contradictory conclusions or, or just ordinary falsehoods should be tolerated. If, if one person thinks, you know, two plus two equals five, well, that's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's more important than uh, that they feel good about themselves and whether it's the truth or not, right? right. So we, we, we want to be tolerant. If that, so, you know, what that means to you, well, that's okay. Unfortunately, um, you don't really make it in the world that way. You don't really work that way. The world doesn't work that no. way. Uh, human opinion. It's become the world's leading religion, at least in, in, in the Western world. The, the Bible describes it perfectly. In 2 Timothy 3.2, it says that in the last days, people, people will be lovers of themselves. We see that today in the way people think. People are in love with their own thoughts. They're in idolatry to their own thoughts. They worship their own heads. Uh, it's the world's leading religion. That's right. Their thoughts, not God's word, govern what they believe and ultimately how they act. 
right. um, because what you believe determines your behavior. And it's in, in, in this way that uh, everyone is, is equally religious because yeah. everyone has a set of beliefs that govern their behavior. And, and this is hardly surprising for, uh, for non-Christians, those who openly reject biblical authority. But it's, it's, it's really actually disappointing seeing how uh, postmodernism has infiltrated into the church. We see yeah. that more and more. And, and of course, the thinking of believers that affects that. And, uh, and we'll continue with this, uh, with this shortly when we get back. At a forum on depression, a young man said, I think some people may have an inability to cope. And maybe this might sound a bit extreme, but that might be Darwinian theory. The Darwin theory of survival of the fittest. Maybe some of us aren't meant to survive. Maybe some of us are meant to kill ourselves. Now, why did this young man think that human life has such little value? Perhaps he'd heard people like Oxford professor Peter Atkins, who said, we are just a bit of slime on the planet. Likewise, psychologist Susan Blackmore said, if you really think about evolution and why we human beings are here, you have to come to the conclusion that we're here for absolutely no reason at all. What a stark contrast to the words of Jesus, who said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. If you just tuned in, we're talking this week about Genesis and biblical authority. Mm. Uh, in a world of opinions, what is the process by which we arrive at truth? We want to arrive at truth. We, we want to develop the ability to discern between truth and error, between right and wrong. That's the goal. That's, that's where we're going. Charles Spurgeon, the great 19th century preacher, said, discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's knowing the difference between right and almost right. <laughs> Well, that's, that's what the world desperately needs, and, but, uh, but especially Christians. Right. We live in a world where human opinion rules, where, where the chief <laughs> virtues are, are pluralism and tolerance, and, and into this comes Christianity, which is singular and intolerant, basically. Yeah. No one comes to the Father except through me. We read that in John 14, 6. You know, there's not a lot of tolerance there no. or, or a room for <laughs> pluralistic ideas, but it's the truth. And the world is becoming increasingly hostile to that message. Uh, theologian R.C. Sproul uh, said this, um, in a culture of pluralism, the chief virtue is tolerance. The only thing that cannot be tolerated is a claim to exclusivity. <laughs> now, uh, now truth, whether it's from the Bible or elsewhere, is singular, intolerant, and exclusive. Mm -hmm. For example, it's true that I have five children. Right. Um, that's a singular truth that is intolerant of the opinion that I have 15 children, <laughs> and it excludes all other opinions. All other opinions are wrong. Other than that are incorrect. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, the truth is, truth is and, and that's again, um, this goes against the grain of most postmodernism, is that all opinions aren't equal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if your car breaks down the, uh, you know, the, the opinion of, a, of an experienced mechanic, that's going to be the most valuable uh, opinion, right? Uh, right. Then, even if someone like a, like a brain surgeon might be a, a brilliant person, but that's not valuable to you when your car is broken down, right? The mechanic has much more knowledge about how to repair automobiles than, than the brain surgeon does. So it doesn't mean that the brain surgeon isn't intelligent, not right. a nice person. Uh, the brain surgeon may have many uh, years of education, perhaps a much higher IQ than the mechanic even, right? But, uh, but not very, uh, very much about cars. So the mechanic's opinion is superior to the brain surgeon. In this case, they're going to be able to determine what's true about your car. Right, right. right. And this is why there are highly intelligent people who believe falsehoods. It's not about intelligence. Determining truth doesn't depend on a high IQ. If, if we take this to the highest level, consider the opinion of God versus the opinion of man. Exactly. 1 Corinthians 1 20, uh, 25 says, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Foolishness of God? That's, Foolishness that's, of God. That's interesting there. Uh, there's really no such thing, of course. Yeah. This verse gives a contrast between the foolishness of men, which they... 
think is wisdom, of course, right. and the wisdom of God, which they think is foolishness. And in other words, it contrasts human wisdom and divine wisdom. Right. Uh, the Bible has a lot to say about how to gain wisdom and discern between truth and error. One of the key verses is Proverbs 1-7, where the starting point for truth is revealed. It says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm. So knowing truth begins with understanding who God is. To, to fear God, it mentions the fear of God. To fear God means to live in the reality of his holiness, his sovereignty, and his judgment of sin. Understanding that provides a foundation for knowledge. Right. So if, if that's the foundation, we can begin to construct a worldview based on truth. Biblical authority starts with revelation from God, not your opinions, right? Um, yep. Richard, you, you, you wrote an article on this, uh, this topic that has more details than we're going to be able to, to get into here today. And if you want to uh, check in those details, you can uh, see the article at our website at creation.com slash biblical dash authority. And I imagine you're going to be getting into all sorts of concepts. Uh, yeah, things that we won't be able to, to do. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just do a summary of that uh, uh, here this week. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that. For more details, see the article on the website. The vigorous promotion of evolution as established fact is causing many Christians to question the biblical creation account. And some non-Christians won't consider Christianity because they believe the Bible has been disproved by science. That's where Creation Magazine comes in. Creation Magazine is a family-friendly publication packed with cutting-edge science that supports the Bible, presented in an easy-to-understand format by some of the leading experts in their fields of study. Visit creation.com to subscribe today. All right, welcome back. On this week's episode, we're talking about biblical authority, the term biblical authority and what that means and how that works in the life of a thinking Christian. Right. How does that work? Well, we, we just talked about the fact that, you know, without starting with the concept of God, um, you know, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, yes. right? Um, without starting with the concept of God, you can't actually know anything for certain. And this is a challenge that many people are dealing with. Well, we can't know anything for certain. And in an atheistic worldview, that's actually true. You know, and you can, you can think of the proposition like this. If I make some abstract statement like A, right? And you say, well, why do you believe A, Cal? And I okay. say, well, because of B. And you say, well, why do you believe B, Cal? And I say, because of C. I can't keep doing that. Yeah. That's infinite regress, regress yeah. right? So you could always have a bit of knowledge that you weren't aware of that could overturn what you think you know, right, in that kind of scenario. Right. And that's a challenge because then you can never know anything for certain. Now, if, you're, if God is real, and he is, and he's revealed truth to us, right, if, if, if we get truth from revelation, then yep. um, that's someone who knows everything. The only way to know anything for certain is you have to know everything, everything, about everything. Yeah. or yeah. you've got to have it revealed to you by everything. So a Christian can say, yeah, I can know what truth is because someone, God exists, he knows everything, and he's revealed truth to you. Yeah. But yeah. in a no God universe, you can't know anything for certain. The situation that you just described there with A, B, C, and so on, That's right. that is the foundation of postmodernism. That's exactly. where you at. can never know anything for certain. So yeah. the whole goal of education now is to go and learn more and more so you can learn more to know for certain that you can't know anything for certain. That's called never coming to an understanding of truth. Sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the extent of, uh, to which biblical authority is applied in the thinking of a, of a Christian depends on how high they view Scripture. A high view of yeah. Scripture stems from the fact that God has revealed himself in written form through human authors and that the information uh, contained in the Bible is, isn't of human origin, that it comes from the God who knows everything. Right. But, but a lot of people, even self-labeled Christians, they're not there. Right. They don't believe that. that that's because uh, but but that's where everything starts understanding the fact that God's word is infallible developing a high view of scripture is part of the spiritual growth of every Christian uh, now for some people it comes quickly uh, for others they never get there for me for example that's something that I had to study and think about 
for, uh, for, for years before I reached that sort of tipping point where I said, yeah, okay, the, the Bible really is true and I need to base my, my life on it. Yeah, and me too. I come from a different background, of course, growing up with my parents not Christians, uh, you know, uh, declaring myself an atheist, well, God doesn't exist, and, and then finally uh, coming to know Christ as my Savior and then looking at God's Word. And it's interesting, though, uh, when I got saved, I remember getting a copy of the Bible, which I'd never, you know, really read in depth at yeah. all, and, and I just started cracking it open. It was like, okay, well, that's, that's God's Word. Word, this this is truth now and I mean that's the renewing of your mind right you go from well I, I don't even believe God exists to boom here I am and I'm, I'm looking at his word right but, but what I've discovered since then is that belief in the Bible is backed up intellectually it's not just a, a, a faith thing right. as it's, I said it's, it's not a blind if you don't thing, yeah. start there you can't even know no truth anyway yeah so. and that's a that's a great part of what CMI does now if you're watching and <clears throat> you're not yet at the point where you see God's word as infallible. There are many resources available today, today to, to help you work through and reason toward that conclusion. There's great websites, creation.com being, being among, among them, uh, being certainly one of them. Yeah. If you go there, go, go to creation.com, across the top of the page, click on topics, and then scroll down to Bible. There are articles there on, uh, is it the word of God? How are we to understand it? Uh, things like that. That, right. can, that can really help get to that, that tipping point. Right. So to start with the foundation that, you know, for developing your own uh, personal view, worldview here, based on truth, begins with revelation. You need to understand that. You know, right. the, the next brick uh, is, is, is human reason. Uh, resting directly on God's word. As, as far as biblical authority is concerned, the key verse for how we are to think is found in 2 Corinthians 10.5. Yes says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Uh, note especially the, the last part of the verse here, we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Yeah, and that's part of that reason brick there. Uh, so in all areas of thinking, we want to understand those things in all areas of thinking in relation to truth. Replying biblical authority, the, the, the foolishness of God <laughs> to every thought. That's how we take thoughts captive. That's what that means. Hey, take any uh, example. How, how about politics? Okay? Right. I mean, to, to properly understand politics, we, we, we scour God's word to determine what uh, you know, the rightful role of government is, the origin of government, the reasons God established it uh, to begin with. And, and the, the correct way then to apply those truths to governing a, cr a country. We can learn that. Right. Take purpose of life, for example. Our understanding of why we are here. The meaning of life stems from the reasons why God made us. A great example of how to apply the authority of the Bible happened in 1643 when 121 scholars and theologians and pastors and teachers along with uh, 30 key laymen met in over 1,100 sessions to produce, three years later, the Westminster Confession of Faith. In question and answer format, nearly 200 questions about life were asked and answered according to scripture. Right. Brilliant document. Yeah. The very first question is, what is the chief end of man? And these yes. great scholars poring over the, uh, the biblical text summarized the answer as, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That's the purpose of life. There it is. Yep. Now what about morality? God sets the rules. He sets the foundation for what is right and what is wrong, not humans. Mm -hmm. You start there to build your morality. What about economics? Uh, the Bible has a lot to say about how we are to use the material possessions that God provides for us. Right. Uh, heaven and hell. What, what is heaven like? Yeah, What's hell talking. like? Do, do they even exist? Uh, there are many, many thoughts out there about uh, heaven and how to get there. Um, you know, we, we work towards an understanding of these things stemming from God's word and, and taking thoughts on these topics captive, conforming them to Christ, uh, to, to the truth. Yeah, and so it goes for all other areas of thinking. The, the sovereignty of God, uh, uh, war, joy, science, sex, the church, male and female roles, other religions, death, work, the nature of Christ, etc., etc. We're going to take a, a short break and continue with some more when we get back, some more of these kinds of thoughts. We'll be right back. 
Does the human Y chromosome suggest that men are headed for extinction? In 2003, an Oxford University geneticist claimed that the human Y chromosome was crumbling before our very eyes and that the demise of men was imminent. Since this time, other researchers have pointed out that these doomsday predictions were overstated. For instance, the Y chromosome has a unique mechanism for correcting harmful mutations. Nevertheless, the Y chromosome certainly shows signs of overall decay, as do the other chromosomes. Human genetic decay is a real phenomenon but it flies in the face of evolutionary ideas. According to evolutionists, all the complex coded information in our genomes supposedly arose through a slow accumulation of random changes called mutations. However, what we see with the Y chromosome is that such natural processes consistently degrade the genetic instructions as opposed to create them. Since the time of Adam, we live in a decaying world, just as the Bible says. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. So uh, if you just tuned in, our subject this week is Biblical Authority, how to determine truth in all areas. Right. If we go back to what we've been constructing here, another verse that gives instruction on how we are to reason is uh, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now there's a specific command not to think like the world. Right. We don't conform to postmodernistic uh, methods of determining truth. Right. Rather, our goal is to hold personal opinions, uh, ours or, or others loosely. Be ready to scrap any opinion you have if it's found to contradict Scripture. Right. And that's a wise thing to do since God's opinions are infinitely superior to ours. Uh, that verse also mentions the goal of renewing your mind is increased ability to discern the will of God. It's a valuable skill. Yeah. We, we, we want to know God's will in every area. Yeah. Now let's get to some topics involving creation and the origins debate. Things like fossils, geology, natural selection, science and its limitations, etc. The age of the earth. Uh, we, Creation Ministries International, have shown that um, these things fit wonderfully with what God's revealed about how he created, right? Uh, there are now more, over more than 10,000 articles uh, detailing this at creation.com. Right, yeah, take natural selection for example. Yes, living things change, but they don't change in a way that will ever evolve a single cell into a palm tree, for example. Yeah. Natural selection works if life was created with a huge amount of genetic information at the beginning, then it can select for variations within that information. Right. Uh, yeah. Fossils. Let's take that, uh, yeah. that idea. I mean, from a biblical perspective, they fit in very easy with the, the history that the Bible records. And as a, as a bonus, science confirms it. Yeah. Um, we, we've talked about this many times. Scientists have found dinosaur fossils with uh, biological structures, including blood vessels and blood cells, even dinosaur DNA, um, which uh, means they're not millions of years old. That doesn't fit with evolutionary, uh, any evolutionary notion. They're not yeah. supposed to last yeah. for millions of years, but they fit perfectly with a biblical worldview. Works very nicely. Yeah. Okay, so you've just hinted at a, at a key benefit of having a worldview or building a personal knowledge base on the foundation of truth, and that is the ability to discern reality from make-believe, <laughs> truth from error. Yeah, I mean, important that, skill. there's a category here we could call fantasy or, uh, you know, make-believe right. or, or yeah. falsehoods, really. You know, uh, from a biblical worldview, we know that evolution, it's, it's a falsehood. We can put it in that category. I mean, if you think biblically, you can just immediately just right. pop it in there. Put it in that, that fantasy category, along yeah. with, you know, things like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. <laughs> those, are, those are fictional. We understand yeah. that. It's, it's entertainment. Uh, we don't pretend that those things are real. Yeah, exactly. I mean, other things could include things like, well, well, Jesus was just a good teacher. You know, right. and G Jesus isn't God. And, and atheism and, and work-based religions and, and millions of years. Those things just aren't true. They're falsehoods, right? They're in the realms of fantasy when you really think about it. They're at about the same level as a fictional novel that you might read. That's think right, about yeah. That. Of course, not everyone believes that those things are fictional. <laughs> in our postmodern world, the center of that worldview is self. Uh, truth is whatever you think it is. Reality is whatever you believe it to be. You know, I believe in myself. You know, reason is then based on self, your own thoughts. Uh, then it gets a little weird. Uh, ironically, that worldview actually accepts and adopts falsehoods, things that are in that fantasy category. It takes those thoughts captive, conforming them to self, mm -hmm. not to Christ. Exactly. You know, evolution fits into that 
worldview, it right? Does. So yeah. does millions of years. Uh, the idea of a very old earth. Atheism fits into the idea there's no God. Yep. And all, all, all three of those sort, uh, you know, they, they kind of travel together as a package deal anyway, right? Because you have to believe in evolution as yes. an atheist, et cetera. Yep. Uh, you know, along with the idea that, uh, you know, Jesus isn't God. That fits over there in that fantasy. Right, yeah, yeah. they're all falsehoods. Yep. The, the, the more you build a worldview on truth, that your word is truth, as it says in John 17, 17, the more you're going to be able to discern between things that are right and things that are almost right yeah. and, and things that are flat out wrong. Right. Now, we come, when we come back here, we're going to look at some of the other major problems uh, you know, with a worldview based on self. We'll be right back. Everyone likes to get things for free. Thanks to donors at Creation Ministries International, we have put great effort into making huge amounts of faith-building information freely available online. Creation.com now has more than 8,000 articles. Some of CMI's most popular books are in PDF format to read online for free. All episodes of Creation Magazine Live and other teaching videos are online at no charge. Consider making a donation, enabling us to continue producing free faith-building information. Welcome back. We're just finishing up talking about biblical authority, discernment, and Genesis. Right. Other problems with this worldview here are inconsistency. Take natural selection, for example. It doesn't fit into a worldview that doesn't include a creator. There are perhaps uh, points of contact, but it doesn't fit into a no-God uh, nature. It is responsible for getting us here type of worldview. It doesn't fit there. It requires an intelligent designer. Right, and, and morality is a big one, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's no biblical God, no ultimate moral law giver, then there's no ultimate moral law, and the, the foundation of moral law ends up being uh, just another opinion, right? Right, yeah. Fossils, there's another one. Uh, they really don't fit over here. A global flood is a great mechanism for producing a global fossil record that scientists observe. Animals and plants show amazing preservation, which means they must have been buried quickly before they rotted, and as we talked about before, dinosaur fossils that are supposed to be millions of years old, but aren't. Fossils don't fit into this worldview. Yeah, another serious problem here is back at the level of, uh, uh, of reason. I mean, if reason is based on self, well, that's yeah. like the foolish man who builds his house on the sand, it right? Yeah. You, you don't have a solid foundation from which to begin reasoning. So you, your reason isn't going to get you know, to any right conclusions um, if the basis for it is whatever you imagine it to be true, right? So, yeah. so at a foundational level, it's a serious, seriously flawed worldview. It is, yeah. Regarding creation, evolution, and genesis, when considering how to determine truth, in the area of origins, the bottom line is, it's determined in the same way that truth is determined in every other area of thought. That's you right. start with, what does God say? Yeah, scientists don't determine truth. No. Christians don't determine truth, no. right? Your Creation Ministries International doesn't determine truth. Pastors, popes, priests, any sort of spiritual guides, they don't determine truth. Right. You yeah. know, worship experiences or visions or dreams or meditation and inner voices, they're, they're not a basis for truth and, and they can actually be extremely deceptive. Right? Yeah, they can be, yeah. yeah. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You, you want to know about how old the earth is? When God created, how long he took, uh, who, who the first humans were. Uh, if you start with human opinion, ideas outside the Bible, you'll never get the right answer. That's right. Now we just kind of scratch the surface here. But uh, for more details, see the article, uh, Genesis 1-11, to a case study for biblical authority at uh, creation.com uh, slash biblical authority. Right. Yeah, yeah, and this is, this is uh, it has to do with creation evolution. A lot of the stuff we do on the show is, is sort of not directly involved with creation evolution, like our ministry. I mean, if you, if you start with truth, and uh, the, the, our focus is obviously creation, mm -hmm. but uh, we deal with many other topics as well. Yep. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about Jesus is God, a biblical defense of the Trinity. We'll see you next week. <laughs>